Barrel Bourbon has a single barrel program with rotating stocks of bourbon, rye, and rum. Talk to your local retailer about picking your own barrel. Learn more at BarrelBourbon.com. Welcome, everybody, to the most highly anticipated whiskey quickie of the year. And today we're looking at the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, five of the most highly sought after bottles out there on the market. And we're going to be reviewing every single one of them for you today. So really looking That's forward all. to it. I know. I'm pumped because this is the only time I will get to try them <laughs> unless a friend is nice enough to have a give me a pour but uh yeah i'm super excited about this yeah yeah this is a uh, really again highly sought after so if you can go ahead and work on your connections to get a bottle go for it but we're here to be able to review it for you and shout out and thank you to buffalo trace for allowing us to actually do this and sending us these samples to uh, to make it all happen yeah shout out to amy and josh we love you so on this version what we're doing is we're gonna be starting with the rye moving into the bourbon and then well Rye is going to be barrel proof when we do the handy, but we're going to do the, the, the barrel proof version at the very end as well. So the first thing we're going to do today is do Sazerac 18 year. Oh. So of course it's 18 years old. Don't, there's really no mystery there. These barrels were filled in the spring of 2002, rested on the third floor of Warehouse K and is bottled at 90 proof. All right. Well, now you have all the information that you need to make a informed judgment when you go and I wonder why they do this at 90 versus, I know you got handy, but it's younger, but the other ones are, but who knows? It, I should ask Josh one day. Yeah, you know, you know I'm not going to have I'm the asking answer. You. I'm not going to have the answer. So let's go ahead and we'll, we'll rate this because this is, again, we used to have Sazerac uh, 18 that was used to be in the tank. Past few years, it was not tanked and they have some more releases coming out fresh from the barrel. So let's see what we have. On the nose, what are you getting? Oh, got some pleasant, like sweet oaks and dried fruits. Um, I agree. A little creaminess, kind of. Uh, it's a great nose, really. Um, I'm really enjoying the nose. I agree, too. All right, so in the taste. It's nice and creamy, delicate. Um, some of that dried fruit starts to peek in at the end. Um, a little bit of spice, but not much. It's pretty mellow. Um, I guess, is you know, a little, little yeah. yeah. 90 kinda, proof. Kind of just dives off, but uh, I mean, it's pretty good. It's a, It's a... Got a lot of flavor for how low proof it is. I was about to say, the flavor-wise, honestly, I think this is the best Sazerac 18 yes. there's been in the past two to three years. Yeah. Um, I immediately thought that as soon mm -hmm. as it, I was like, wow, we got it. We got it back. Because the past few years, it had like this funky aroma or funky yeah. taste to it. But this year, I mean, it kind of goes back to the way it was and it's more of those delicate, sweet, balanced flavors. So yeah. on the nose, how are you going to rate this? Thumbs up. Love the nose. And on the taste? Thumbs up. Really liked it. And on the finish? Sideways, want a little more, uh, but it's got a lot of good flavors. Just kind of falls flat for me. All right. Stick around. We got Thomas Handy next. And now we're looking at Thomas H. Handy. Now, this is the younger version, much younger version than Sazerac Rye, but also comes in at barrel proof. So this year it was distilled in the spring of 2014, making it six years old, aged in warehouses K, M, and N, and comes in at a hundred and twenty-nine proof. Oh wow! I would, I'm guessing if the more warehouses, the more bottles they're going to have. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's something from that. You're trying to dig into the facts. I'm trying, trying, well, trying I'm to find trying out to some how many bottles they got. Read between the lines. Because you know. now they don't release bottle counts, right? Actually, they never release bottle oh, okay. counts. Our, our friends over at Breaking Bourbon they used to do some spreadsheet magic where they would say how many barrels there were in this particular release and what the yield or what the evaporation loss was. And so what they would do is they'd just use some spreadsheet magic and figure out the yield. Wow. I know. People are dedicated. I know. But people loved it. So, all right. So on the nose, where are you at here on Thomas H. Handy? Uh, you know, a lot of cinnamon, uh, like those hot candies, the hot tamales, like sweet, sugary, cinnamon, mm -hmm. fiery kind of stuff. A little bit of maybe oak in there. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. I, I agree with the kind of like a little bit of orange peel on there too. Yep. You nailed it. Yeah. I try. All right. On the taste. Pretty good it's, ride. Yeah. It's a, you know, it's a firecracker. Um, it make an intense old fashioned. Yeah. It's got a great viscosity. It's kind of syrupy. 
that orange peel is really shining through on the palate on this. Mm -hmm. um, that's all I'm really getting is the orange peel that opens kind of up to this nice fiery cinnamon kind of flavor. Yeah. And if I didn't mention beforehand, one thing I should also is that every single one of these come in at an SRP of $100. So I don't know if I mentioned that in the first one, but just so you know, if you're looking for them, $100 is what the suggested retail price is. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a funny joke, but we'll see. All right. On the nose, where you at here? Uh, kind of sideways. Mm -hmm. I really like the nose of Saz, so I'm probably comparing to that, but uh, kind of sideways. It's hard to compare a six-year-old and an 18-year-old yeah. uh, whiskey. So on the taste... Uh, thumbs up. I mean, thumbs up sideways, probably sideways. It's sideways. more average. Um, That's what I'd say. It's like, you know, three quarters. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of six-year-old ryes that are out there on the market that would probably be comparative to it as well. Yeah. And on the finish. Uh, thumbs up. I mean, I liked it. It's still bold, big, bold, you know, cinnamon kind of spice flavor going. So, uh, that's kind of the taste. I was kind of like three quarters because I like to finish so much, but I'm confusing everyone. So, <laughs> so we'll say so sideways, sideways thumbs. Yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and take that. All right, stick around. We're moving to the bourbons next. So moving on to the bourbon, we are starting with Eagle Rare 17. Now, last year, this was one of my favorite releases, so I'm really looking forward to it again because in the past, I think it was like two or three years, they changed the proof on it to move from, I think, mid-90s up to 101 proof. Yes, it was a good move. Which I think really amplified, A, the brand, the bottle, and, and really just the flavor and everything around it. So on this year, as I mentioned, 17 years old, 101 proof. These were distilled in the spring of 2002 and aged on the first floor of Warehouse P. P. Mm -hmm. Representing. How about it? So let's go ahead. There's a lot of K in. action. Yeah, I know. Let's I guess we, that's where the rise hang. <laughs> you need to. P's for the bourbon. Yeah. Find some variety in there. So on the nose, where are you at here? Oh, your, your wheelhouse right mm -hmm. here. Sweet oak right off the yeah. bat. I mean. It's really good. Yeah, vanilla, creamy. Oh, I just sloshed it on my shirt. Oh, God. Oh, there, there went like a nickel's worth of Eagle Rare right there. Gosh, that's expensive. This happened. <laughs> All right. Man, yeah, that's that a great nose. Is, Leather, I, like, it's a whiskey geeks. It's Well, I mean, it's just that, that particular mash bill from BT, and it's really just amplified yeah. at this age. Because you, you, it might be mash bill number one. I don't know. I don't want to get into this because people will start commenting and be like, oh, it's number two. And <laughs> It'll show that we don't know what we're doing. Yeah, we try our best. We really do. All right, on the taste. Here we at. Some more sweet oak, a little bit of cherry. There's a, a little, slight bitterness to it. Yeah, a little tannicky towards the That's the what end. I was looking for. I was hoping there'd be a little more like cherry up front or something to kind of move into the sweet oak, but it's more like just pure sweet oak, tannic, mm -hmm. little vanilla cream. It, for me, I almost get kind of like a dusty yeah. taste to it. Yeah, kind of dusty funk. Yeah, and so that's that's kind of why I'm like, ooh, it does. It tastes, it tastes really good to me, but... Whew. Well, let's go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll rate this one. So on the nose, we I'm thumbs here, up. I really liked it. Yep. And on the taste? Uh, thumbs up. Really liked it. And the finish? I'm kind of sideways. Like if I know you love tannins, kind of sweet oak. Uh, if you're in that wheelhouse, like bitterness, you're going to love this. Uh, for me, it's a little too much of that. Yeah. And it's going to depend on your mood of the day. If you want barrel proof or if you're looking at something a little bit less, 101 proof per se. So it's not going to have that punch as you would in a finish, but... Uh, for me, I, I love it. Yeah. All right, stick around. We'll give it a thumbs. Another thumbs. No, okay. <laughs> the high proofers are next. All right, moving on to William LaRue Weller, one of the fan favorites of a lot of bourbon lovers out there because it's essentially a barrel proof version of Weller, which is the heritage line of Pappy Van Winkle, Delano Weller. A lot of buzzwords there. Oh, I know. People are, people just love it. So we got to. Go ahead and pander to them a little bit, but let's give you some deets on what's happening with this year's Wimbledon Weller. So the 2020 release was distilled in the winter of 2008, which means that it is 12 years old, and aged in warehouses I and C, coming in at 134.5 proof. Was last year's 12 years? I can't remember. They've been 12 years yeah. for a few years now. I think the only ones that were more than that were actually the early years. I think they were closer to like 18, um, but... Over the past few releases, they've basically become a lot of barrel-proof Weller 12, which 
Nobody's really going to complain. It's still no. really good. It must be a crafter perfect willing really well or experiment <laughs> or something. Nobody's going to say no. All right. So on the nose. I mean, everything now. you love about Weller, the Weller line, like, I mean, just that cherry cordial. I was about to say, the like, cherry I mean, is really coming I in. I say it every year, and I want something different to describe it, but you can't. It's really, like, cherry, creamy, chocolate-type notes. It's really good. And for me, there's still some alcohol vapor to it, but yeah. we're moving in progression here, so 134-ish proof. It's going to do that. A little astringent on the, kind of the end, towards the end of the nose, but mm -hmm. uh, not nothing nothing hateful. No, but you're right. That that cherry cordial note is, is very prominent there. Yep. All right, so on the taste. Same thing, mm -hmm. I mean, cherry cordial. Opens up to like some nice cinnamon spice um, that I'm not used to. Uh, I mean, usually these are spicy, but this has a lot, little more cinnamon spice than I'm used to. Because typically you think of wheat as being a little bit more mellow. Softer, or, this yeah. one kind of brings a little kind of harshness towards the end, mm -hmm. um, which I'm not used to with the Willemuller wine. Not wine, line. Yeah, but I honestly- But it's still great. <laughs> but it, but that, that finish really hits too, and it still brings even more spice. Yep. Absolutely. So, on how are you going to rate this, Ryan? On the nose, where are you at here? I'm thumbs up. I still love, I can nose these all day. I love William Louis Wellers. Okay. And the taste? Thumbs up. All right. Well, I'm guessing the finish is going to be a thumbs up. Where are you at on this one? I'm actually going to go a little sideways. I I don't know. To me, it was a little. Did you expect little, more? Is that what you expected? Yeah. I kind of expected a little more, like, it's it's more alcohol burn than, like, flavor burn. And it's like a little astringent on the end. So just, it's a, I'm being a little picky. It's but, okay. Uh, but it's really good. <laughs> it's okay. And you know, like I said, this is one of the most anticipated releases out there. So it's okay to kind of want to judge it and, you know, be against it. But I will say only being a hundred dollar SRP, you got to be able to say it's still oh, a value. Fantastic. It's still a value at the end of the day. If you can find it at that versus something that's an SRP of 800 or a thousand. So oh, all day, very, very different. All right. George C. Stagg coming up next. And now we're here to wrap it up with the final, I guess, what do you call it? Bottle entrant, whatever you'd call it, of the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, George T. Stagg. The entrant, like they, <laughs> like they submitted to yeah, like, have us review it. You, you just made it in the Olympic trials. Way yep. to go. No, I mean, this is, for, for most of us, this is a, a staple. It's a powerhouse of the antique collection. You know, it's a barrel-proof offering of their, you know, their signature mash bill. So really looking forward to this one. So here's the details on this year. So it was bourbon barrels filled in the spring of 2005, which makes it 15 years old. Storage locations of warehouses L, K, and Q, and coming in at 130.4 proof, which is middle to where it's been in the past few years. It's been, I think, like in the low to high mid 20s, a little high. That's basically the entire range of 20s, <laughs> uh, mid to high 20s, and then even the low 40s over the years. So we're coming right around the middle here. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I don't know, I guess it's a good proof. I don't know. Like you said, they just dump it and whatever happens, happens. So. Well, yeah, you dump the barrels and whatever the proof comes out is, is what it comes out at. So on the nose, where are you at here? There's a lot of dried fruits, cherries, um, like that oak, tobacco, leather, like everything you want out of a really deep, rich whiskey. That's what I'm thinking too. It, it, it is, it, it's hitting all those pieces, as you just said. Leather, oak, tobacco, a uh, little bit of the cherry cordial maybe, but let's go ahead and hit on the taste and see what you think. Oh man. Really good. There's a lot going. There's dried fruits, there's oak, there's leather, there's, I mean, if you got the bourbon flavor wheel, you could like make a checkbox to like. Maybe a little bit of black pepper. Like 75% of the flavor notes on there. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some like orange peel there's cherry there's i mean you could list off dates figs whatever <laughs> it depends on what you're thinking at the moment because right. it really does it hits a lot of those things so yeah very so good let's go ahead and rate this so on the nose where you at thumbs up really liked it and on the taste thumbs up really liked it and on the finish thumbs up really liked it did we is that the first of the three thumbs up everywhere it is yeah and i i mean normally i know we're rounding into what's our favorite so normally I love William Really Weller, but I have to give it to this year's stag for me. 
And so I guess I'm Team Kenny. There we go. Because I'm, I do not like. <laughs> I'm always a big fan of Stag. You know, for me, even this year's Igor 17 and the Sazerac 18 were actually phenomenal. I thought mm-hmm. they were really good. Sazerac 18 was, I think, the best it's been in a few years. However, if I had a choice between any of these, I would probably just still two Stag. Uh, yep. Just because I think at the end of the day, you're going to have a, a really good experience when you're drinking it, you're sipping it. And you get, oh, again, a lot of those flavor profiles, barrel-proof expression versus something like EOR 17. A lot of good flavors. However, you're not going to get that finish and stuff like that. So Yeah, so Stag is the champion. Who would be second for you? Oh, gosh. You know, I'm going to choose Sazerac 18 this year. I was going to say the same thing. I thought <laughs> it was really good. Uh, Only because I was like, I think we gave a lot of credit to Eagle Rare 17 last year. I think Eagle, or sorry, Sazerac 18 this year really stepped it up in regards of just like, as I mentioned before, it's just, it used to have this sort of like moldy, mildew, funky taste to it that we weren't big fans of, but this year, like that's gone and yeah. and it, it really shines through and it's a really good offering this year. All right. So we're in agreement there. What's third? Third. Uh, well, I think it's going to be Eagle Rare 17 for me. What about you? I'm going to go William Lou Weller uh, still. Uh, not as excited as normally with it. Normally I put it in my top, but it's still really good. Eagle Rare 17 had some bitterness, tanicky that I, so it's the difference between two palettes. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, uh, when I was third for me and then Eagle Rare and then Andy. There we go. So there's our rankings. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you all next week. Cheers. Cheers.